This is a small bachelor herd of impalas. They're not quite fully grown, some of them. These ones that we're looking at are. Um, the bachelor herds basically form, I suppose, safety in numbers. They're non-territorial males. Once uh, these guys exact a dominance from an individual, or once an individual is found to be more dominant, he he basically moves away and starts to hold or maintain a territory, or uh, at least a piece of territory. And uh, that he does until the females come along. So yeah, that's a, 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 the rump coloration is for signaling. Um, you can start to to have a look whenever I film animals. Just have a look at that. It's called a posmatic coloration, the black and white um, on most of the animals. Notice when this ram is defecating over here that his tail gets fluffed out as a very w big white signal. And I guess that implies, or one of the, the things that it implies is that this is where he is marking or, uh, at, or creating a territorial scent. The little impala lamb should be born now from as early as from uh, September, but with the late rains, probably more like November this year. Impalas have a, about a six and a half month gestation period. Now, sometimes we jokingly refer to the impalas as the McDonald's of the bush because of that posmatic coloration on their rumps. Um, in fact, there's some coming up here. If you have a look at that rump of the impala, that uh, looks like a big McDonald's sign. And you know, in uh, the Afrikaans language in South Africa, burger, the word burger means citizen. And because there are 150,000, approximately 150,000 impalas in the, in the Kruger, they can definitely be categorized as citizens of this bush, of the Kruger. Um, but they are catalysts for, for uh, finding out what's going on in the bush, looking at the reaction and the behavior of uh, impala herds is is one of the great things uh, to do. Uh, they are extremely good at identifying any predators near them. Uh, they have very obvious alert signals uh, in their postures and of course when they do isolate or identify that there's a predator in the, the area then their warning calls are um, very harsh kind of bark like I'll try and imitate the sound for you. And they get very alert and erect and pointed towards the source of the, the threat. And uh, they then try and confirm confirm uh, that threat with uh, by, by looking at it. So often, and because they, their eyes are on the sides of their heads, they, um, they need to walk forwards. They're not very good with uh, the, the kind of binocular vision that we have where you know, we can focus very easily on something ahead of us. Uh, their eyes are on the side of their heads, so they have to actually perhaps tilt their heads or look backwards or run towards the, the, the threat and the, the source of the threat. And so watching impalas is a good thing to do in the bush. They're also uh, one of the few antelope that uh, that we have over here that basically browse and graze. They eat leaves and bulbs and shoots as well as grass. Um, we refer to them as fringe. Uh, their habitat is like a fringe habitat. They live in uh, thickets and undercover and then come out into the open to perhaps graze the grass. But there's a lot of uh, herds and impalas around this area. Here's some more. These are young males. Okay. Um, you will notice as I drive past them, their, their horns aren't as, um, as big as the, the other ones that we were filming just now. 